Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Peter Knox. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Today the Church celebrates the third Sunday in ordinary time. Um, we're invited to think about our commitment, whether we're ready to get up and follow Jesus immediately, as Peter, James, John, and Andrew did, got up and followed Jesus immediately. At the beginning of this celebration together, let's ask the Lord to inspire us, to help us to hear our call when Jesus says to us, come follow me. And we ask God for forgiveness and for greater generosity when we hear his call. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, so that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them, Light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod for his oppressor, you have broken, as on the day in Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? The Lord is my light and salvation. There is one thing I ask of the Lord. Only this do I seek to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to inquire at his temple. 
The Lord Lord is my light and salvation. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord Lord is is my light light and salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there is no that there be no dissensions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brethren. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every infirmity among the people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and dwelt in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. That was so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, toward the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, life has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I'll ask you to bear with me for a minute, even if you think I'm being irrelevant or what I'm sharing with you is a distraction. Just bear with me for a minute, and then I'll explain to you towards the end of this homily why what I'm saying is relevant. As I was reflecting on that gospel passage from St. Matthew, I was wondering what happened to those nets which were left behind by James and John, by Peter and Andrew? You see, I'm very aware of what is called ghost fishing equipment. Fishing equipment that gets left in the sea or on the seashore. Last year, I had the privilege of living in a coastal village for some time. And almost every day, I found fishing lines or hooks or sinkers or floats uh, on the beach. In my earlier youth, 
I found abandoned nets on the beach. It seems that this practice is very ancient, going back to the time of Je Jesus and his disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew. But this ghost fishing gear causes untold damage and suffering to all sorts of marine animals, birds, fish, turtles, seals, sharks, shore animals. They all get caught up in this fishing gear and they can die a long and lingering death. Peter, James, Andrew, and John had more important things to do. They left everything and they followed Jesus. In our modern generation, time is money, and modern fishermen and women don't want to spend any more time than necessary repairing their nets or storing them in a proper way. When nets get fouled or caught up on something, they are cut off and abandoned, creating what is now called ocean plastic pollution. True, in Jesus' time, the nets were not made of plastic, but of some biodegradable material. But they still had the potential to unintentionally kill thousands of marine animals. And if it isn't fishing gear, then what we throw away, those of us who live in urban centers, is plastic related to our lifetime, a life, lifestyle of consumption. Walking on the beach again every evening with my friend last year, we picked up hundreds of little blue plastic sticks, which come from one particular brand of cotton buds. Other brands have switched to paper sticks with little cotton buds at either side, paper which can break down. We also found plastic containers of every shape and size washed up, down the, washed up onto the shore or washed down the rivers from, from villages or towns upriver. Pope Francis is right when in 2015 he wrote in his encyclical on care for our common home, the earth is turning into one enormous pile of filth. How sad. Many countries in Africa have banned single-use plastic bags. And now in Kenya, where I live, we do our shopping with baskets or cotton bags. I find it disappointing to see that in South Africa, single-use checkers shopping bags are still distributed at the shops. We regard the extra 20 cents or so as a tax, but that doesn't discourage us that doesn't discourage us from using them once and then throwing them away. In Montreal last month, in December, the United Nations had its 15th COP meeting on the, on the Convention on Biological Diversity. Our countries pledge to protect life and the variety of life on Earth. We're all concerned that species of plants and animals are becoming extinct in their thousands because of human action, changing ecosystems, pollution, climate change, our voracious appetite for food and arable land, our voracious appetite for oil products, petrol, diesel, paraffin, whatever. It's estimated that agriculture is most responsible for the loss of biodiversity on the land, as more and more forests or grasslands are put under crops. But where I live in Nairobi, shopping malls are built in wetlands, destroying the homes of hundreds of birds, insects, and fish species. We make faint protests and then carry on with our throwaway lifestyle as though nature simply doesn't matter. In Nairobi, there are no facilities for recycling plastic. So in my college, we have agreed not to bring plastic bottles for water or soda, soft drinks onto campus. But this is an uphill battle. Pope Francis brings to our attention again and again that we are only one among millions of species living on this planet, which God created for all living creatures. We are related to and interdependent on all forms of life. We need to leave other forms of life as much space as they need to survive. And to the generations of human children 
who will follow off after us? Are we going to leave them a barren earth? Will all our children and children's children thank us for driving big cars that are emitting so much greenhouse gas that the climate is changing irreversibly? When they have to deal with droughts and famine and floods, are they going to say, well, at least our parents and grandparents had a good life? Why is this relevant to today's readings, apart from the tenuous connection which I made with the fishing nets? And for Jesus preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Pope Francis encourages us all to undergo an ecological ecological conversion as a necessary part of being Catholic. You see, in the Bible, the gospel is always located in a particular time and space. Today we hear of Jesus in Galilee, Nazareth, Zebulun, Naphtali, the Jordan, the land of the Gentiles. It's always located somewhere geographically and in a particular time Many of these places may seem very exotic to some of us. None of it is taking place in a vacuum. When I picture these gospel scenes, I picture a pristine landscape. Maybe that's just romanticism. Nowadays, I suppose, Jesus might be walking among those piles of filth, speaking to people living on the dumps, dealing with people who are struggling with respiratory diseases because of the dust blown off the mine dumps, as we have around Johannesburg, for ex example. If Jesus were to return today, this is probably where we would find him. Like Peter and Andrew, James and John, we are also called to follow Jesus. And there is an urgency. You might have noticed, as I was reading the Gospel, that they left what they were doing immediately. They left their nets, they left their boats immediately to go on the mission of catching men, catching people, bringing people towards God. Their witness to the kingdom, healing diseases and healing every infirmity, would have been much less credible if they took their time, if they were leaving an ecological trail of destruction behind them. Many people ask these days why so many young youth appear to be leaving the church. Do you think it might be because they don't hear teaching or see integrity of witness on the environmental issues? The ecological crisis has been labeled the greatest existential threat of our times. Young people feel the existential threat. Young people feel an existential angst relating to ecology, ecological angst. What do they see when they look at older Christians and older Catholics? Do they see people who are equally concerned, people who take their concerns seriously? How do we elder, older Catholics treat the rest of the creation around us? Is there a coherence between what we profess as Christians and the way we live? Is God's good news undermined by the lifestyle we lead? Do we understand the urgency of the environmental crisis of which we are part? Let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father oh, Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers before the Lord, trusting in God's benevolence and goodness towards us and our contemporaries. We pray for our church and the leaders in our church. They have answered the call to follow God, and we pray that they will continue to live authentically in their Christian teaching and in their Christian ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the leaders of our country. We have elected and chosen them to lead us that they will continue to do the best that they can and for the good of all people in this country. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for each one of us gathered here, for our families, for those who have strayed, for those we are separated or alienated from. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the sick in our communities, those struggling daily to follow Christ because of their illnesses, because of their difficulties. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for all your prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you to hear these and all our prayers, which we bring to you in trust and confidence, in humility and faith, through Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This is God for you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. This is God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good all God's holy church. We pray, Lord, accept our offerings, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them out to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we've brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Bhuti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
grant that, receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace and joy to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.